Welcome to Marking the End Times. I'm Mark Hitchcock, and as always, thank you so much for joining us for this week's program. Um, After Iran's barrage of 200 ballistic missiles fired at Israel, uh, the world right now is waiting for Israel's response. Uh, The Middle East is on edge. uh, The world is on edge. And there are all kinds of questions that are being raised. Uh, This is Iran now, their, their second direct attack on Israel in Iran's history since the 1979 revolution. Uh, They attacked Israel back in April with about 120 uh, ballistic missiles, some drones, all kinds of uh, different things. But now, 200 ballistic missiles. And the attack back in uh, last April, they kind of had a a pre-warning. They kind of sent in drones ahead of time, letting them know these ballistic missiles were coming. This time, they were just uh, fired without any warning. Now, fortunately, the U.S. had a lot of intelligence to warn Israel uh, that this was coming. But Iran has done something now for the second time that's really unprecedented in in its history. And this has raised all kinds of questions. Um, The first one is, and we'll we'll get to all these in in a little bit. I just want to lay them out here for us. What is Iran's end game? Now, what is Iran wanting to accomplish through this? Some believe that Iran is just doing uh, kind of having a kind of a show of strength to kind of reassure its proxies. You know, Iran's proxies right now are reeling. Um, Hezbollah is reeling. Hamas is reeling. They're, they're really wondering if Iran uh, really has their back and really has the power to defend them. So this may just be kind of a show of strength to kind of reassure um, it, its proxies. This may be Iran kind of drawing a red line and saying, you know, Israel, you, know, you assassinated or you killed uh, you know, Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah. This is a red line. And if you go past this red line again, then uh, we'll, we'll attack. Um, Another question is, how extensive, and I think this is the big question right now, how extensive will Israel's response be? Um, Israel has promised a massive payback. Those are their words. Um, Israel has promised a a punishing uh, response. It's interesting, Israel's uh, Iron Dome and their, their other missile defense system called David's Sling have been working very well. It's really a miracle when you think about this. No one in Israel was killed from 200 ballistic missiles being fired into Israel. Now, there was a terrorist attack where seven Israelis were killed in Jaffa. But as a result of these ballistic missile attacks, no one was killed. I mean, that's that's really miraculous uh, to think of that. But, but how extensive will, will Israel's response be to this? And how will the rest of the world respond? Uh, How will Saudi Arabia respond? How will Jordan respond? These other nations in the Middle East, how much aid will the United States give uh, to Israel as they they, they prosecute uh, this war? So, and then the final thing I want to focus on, obviously, are what are the prophetic implications um, of this? We are seeing unprecedented things happening now in the Middle East. Israel, I think, now has a momentum that they've not had before. And it's, it's, uh, it's going to lead, I think, to, in the not very distant future, an all-out war over there between Israel and between Iran. Now, before we get uh, further into this, let me mention in a little bit, we'll go to the subscriber-only section. And uh, right now in the subscriber-only section, I'm kind of alternating back and forth in some different weeks of answering questions. But also a lot of the weeks we've been going through the book of Revelation, just kind of a a week by week methodical study. We're in Revelation chapter two right now, uh, looking at these letters that Jesus wrote to seven churches. And so we're going to look today at the church, the letter to the church of Smyrna. And I call this the poor rich church, the poor uh, rich church. So uh, we'll look at that in a little bit in the subscriber only section. Uh, The the Middle East though right now is on the brink of all out war. Um, Iran is the nation, of course, that's attacked Israel. Israel says they're going to, you know, issue and and, and level this uh, a punishing response against uh, Iran. Many are saying that, that Israel should try to take out the Ayatollah, just as they did with Nasrallah and many of these other leaders. That would be really aiming at, at killing the Ayatollah uh, Khamenei. Many are saying that Israel is going to strike Iran's oil refineries. I don't know if you've seen these pictures online, but but look at all the, the long lines of people in Iran getting getting gasoline because they, they believe their refineries are going to be hit. And so they're storing up as much as they can on gasoline because they, they believe these refineries will be will be hit. Another target could be Iran's eight nuclear facilities. 
Now, that's very difficult because these nuclear facilities are scattered all over Iran. And, it, you know, it's, it's about 930 miles from Israel to Iran. So it's a long distance. You'll have to have massive bunker busters. They're, they're spread all over the country. But, but many believe that Israel is going to try to do the impossible and try to render a crippling blow against Iran's nuclear program. Now, one concern though, that some people have about this is that Iran may be anticipating that Israel is going to hit their nuclear facilities, and this could push Iran to rush forward to produce a nuclear weapon. You know, they're going to realize that, hey, maybe are, these places are going to get taken out. And Iran currently has enough fissile material to produce three nuclear weapons. So that could expedite Iran's uh, production of uh, these uh, nuclear weapons as well. But Iran says that if Israel retaliates, these are their words, there will be a crushing response. So here's where we are right now. It's just like what happened back in April. Iran has struck Israel. Um, Israel is going to strike back. We know that. But in April, that's where it ended. But Iran struck Israel. Israel will strike back. And if Iran is true to its word and then comes back against Israel again with this this alleged crushing response, that then I believe is going to trigger um, an all out response. And and from there on, it's going to be, uh, you know, anyone's guess here on earth of what will happen. But I think Iran, Israel, I think Israel's response will be significant. Israel has momentum right now. I think they feel that. I think they feel the the wind at their backs. And I I think they're going to seize this opportunity to go on the offensive, to try to once and for all uh, get rid of Hamas as they've already already neutralized Hezbollah, Iran. And there's even talk that they're going to begin to mount uh, some major offensive as firing missiles and all kinds of things down to the Houthis uh, down in, in, in Yemen. So Israel seems to be seizing this opportunity. Now, one of the things I talk about often on this program, we don't want to just look at Israel and Iran. We have to also look at these other nations that will be part of the Gog-Magog coalition in Ezekiel 38, because that's where all this is heading. And we, we commonly on this program, we often talk about Turkey and Russia, because they're the other two core nations of the Gog-Magog coalition. And in light of Iran's attack against Israel, uh, there's several interesting things happening with Turkey and and with Russia. Uh, Since October 7th, uh, Turkey, led by its president Erdogan, has tried to rally anti-Israel sentiment within the Islamic world. They've been trying to whip up the Islamic world um, against Israel. There's a report this week, a headline from Reuters, that says Turkey's Erdogan says UN should recommend use of force if Israel's not stopped. She's trying to get the UN to take forceful action against Israel if they're not stopped. By the way, I'll mention this. Israel has, uh, has forbidden the UN Secretary General to come to Israel. Um, he's persona non grata in Israel. Now, they don't want him there. Uh, when this attack took place, he failed to even use the name of the nation Iran and failed to condemn uh, their aggression. So... You know, Erdogan's calling on the U.N. to do something here, but uh, Israel is is fed up with the United Nations and what's happening there. Uh, The Times of Israel has a headline, Erdogan vows Turkey will support Lebanon with all our means. And he says Israel will be stopped. Um, He compared, uh, Erdogan compared uh, Netanyahu to Hitler. Of course, these are just common statements that are being made all the time. Here's an irrational statement, though, that Erdogan made. He's, he warned that Israel might attack Turkey after they attack, attack Palestine and Lebanon. That, that's an irrational statement. Turkey is a member of NATO. Israel is not going to attack Turkey and, and have all of NATO uh, come against them. So these are some irrational statement. he's, statements he's making, but it's to just foment more and more hatred uh, for Israel and more suspicion of Israel. And he said this as well, occupation, terror, and aggression are right next to us. We will stand against this uh, with all of our might. So Turkey's rhetoric against Israel just continues to to increase. Now, something that's fascinating that happened during uh, all of this time when Iran is firing these missiles into Israel, Russia is cementing their relationship with Iran and strengthening, strengthening their ties. The, the Russian prime minister, his name is Mikhail uh, Mishustin. Now, he's not the president. Vladimir Putin's president. But he's the prime minister. 
Right after Nasrallah was killed, they're the Hezbollah leader. Amid all of the things that are happening there in Lebanon, Vladimir Putin sends the prime minister of Russia to Iran. And on, on, on Monday, this last Monday, September 30th, he met with the Iranian president, uh, Pazeshkian. So he traveled to Tehran during all of this to meet with the Iranian president there. Now, I'm sure they talked about all kinds of strategic issues related to Ukraine and, and the arms that, that Iran is supplying there. But one thing we know that happened is they locked in a gas pipeline deal with Russia, a 30-year deal that Iran will receive 300 million cubic meters of Russian gas per day. So the ties between Russia and Iran are, are growing. And to me, it's significant that right after Nasrallah is killed, right when Iran is going to attack Israel, he sends the prime minister of Russia to Iran, uh, to Tehran, to meet with the president there. That there are grave concerns right now by the United States and by uh, the UK that Russia is assisting Iran with its nuclear program. And certainly that wouldn't be a surprise, I think, to any of us. Now, with all of this that's happening, there's something that I, that I think is interesting that we want to think about for a moment. And that is, you know, Ezekiel 38 says that when Russia, Iran, Turkey, their allies come into Israel in the end times, that Israel's going to be at rest and living securely. Now, I've often believed and, and, and taught mostly that I think this will be a result of the Antichrist coming and making a seven-year treaty with Israel. But with what's happening right now, think about if the dominoes begin to fall with Hamas, if Israel's able to, to neutralize Hamas and, and Hezbollah and the Houthis, and, and say that Israel is able to deal a death blow to Iran and that there's regime change in Iran, which is what what uh, President or Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, what he really is seeking. And that all these proxies then become dismantled. Israel could enjoy a peace like they've never had up to this period of time. Uh, they could really create this peace uh, on their own or by themselves. And then the world would applaud that. Most of the world would applaud these, these evil actors uh, being destroyed. Now, that would still require a solution to the, the so-called Palestinian problem. What to do with the Palestinians from Gaza and, and, and in the West Bank. But it could be that there's a peace in Israel, they're, they're at rest and living securely before the Antichrist even comes along to maybe confirm the peace that already exists. So it's an interesting development here with all that's happening with Israel, all the momentum they have right now, that a, a peace could be achieved over there, unlike anything we've ever seen or ever imagined. If Israel's able to go and, and prosecute this war and uh, and and neutralize Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and really even even neutralize Iran and maybe, you know, foster this regime change that, are, that that's there. So all the key players are in place and peace through strength by Israel could be a real possibility. And what we could have then is when the Antichrist comes along and uh, Daniel chapter 9, 27 says he confirms or makes this covenant with Israel. It could be the confirmation of a lot of things that already exist that he comes and, and brings to pass with Saudi Arabia then at that time and some of the other uh, neighboring nations in that area. But all of these things are coming together. They're converging. I'm at just the right time. And of course, uh, here we are uh, today as I'm making this video, uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, begins in Israel, the Feast of Trumpets, and the people all across Israel are celebrating uh, this fall feast. And uh, my prayer is that uh, just as the trumpets are sounding in Israel, the trumpet will sound, and uh, the Lord Jesus will come and catch us away to heaven very soon. Well, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you're uh, if you're not a subscriber at endtimes.com, I want to encourage you to go to endtimes.com and, and sign up there and become a subscriber because we're going to go to that subscriber only section now. And we're doing just a, kind of a, a very uh, methodical, systematic teaching going through the book of Revelation. And we're in Revelation chapter two. Uh, today we'll be talking about a Jesus letter uh, to the church at Smyrna, which has a lot of wonderful application uh, for our lives today. So we'll go now uh, to that subscriber only section.